Welcome everybody to the next webinar developing superb trading strategies in cooperation with the broker Argus FX. My name Stefan Friedrichowski, as usual and unchanged of course. And um, yeah, for the records, so we have today the 25th of August 2016 and uh, it's 11 o'clock uh, at least in Germany right now. Well, um, it's a pleasure for me to have you once again here within that uh, webinar. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but it may be already the sixth or seventh uh, webinar uh, of the webinar series Deve developing superb trading strategies. Yeah, and uh, the agenda for today is as always, um, that means I would like to mention first of all uh, question and answers uh, during the last week. Uh, there are always some questions um, getting to me, uh, finding the way to me um, via the email friedrichowski at argusfx.com and of course um, everybody can use uh, that uh, email address to get in contact with me and I try to help everybody. I have had a long conversation um, yesterday with one of you um, looking around uh, for some help with his own uh, strategy. Um, yeah, it was really a pleasure to do it and um, hopefully <laughs> it was good for him uh, as well. Yeah, besides the question and answers of last week, um, today I want to have uh, two uh, main topics. One is uh, optimization and analysis of um, trading accounts. Uh, that means um, something really in general. So it's not um, directly linked to a certain strategy. It's meant um, how to analyze your own trading activities which I think is always quite important and it does not depend uh, whether you have a fixed um, and um, determined trading strategy, maybe you uh, just do your trades by your own, um, by chart analysis and um, one trade comes to the other and from time to time it's a good idea to have a closer look to your own results and there are some tools and uh, today I will show you one via FX Blue um, to have a good view on your own account in order to see what you are doing and um, in order to get some hints of what might to be changed within your trading activities. I do those steps um, because I'm not only interested in my equity itself, um, it's more yeah, to really figure out uh, what goes wrong, what goes right and maybe you find some hints um, during that investigation which can improve your trading activity. And the third topic for today is, um, yeah, the title is uh, Sense and Nonsense of uh, Martingale uh, Strategies, um, which is quite common even at trading to do something like that, um, but um, you will see what it means, Martingale uh, strategies, and um, we will apply the same rules uh, maybe for for some very easy um, trading strategy as well, because you can see what it's really uh, coming out if you you do something like Martingale uh, approaches which is more or less uh, something like when you lose, you increase your risk. That would be the short description, but we will see uh, later in detail. Um, so the 
the question um, which I would like to share with everybody here, uh, which came up uh, last week, uh, was the question: How can I get signals from my own trading account to my mobile, to my smartphone, uh, for example? So the question is simply: Maybe you have a computer at home, you go at work or you, some other activities, but still you want to know: Hey. Um, are there any trades closed? Are there um, any new trades entering because your buy limit or buy stop or whatever has been um, touched? And at least you want to know a little bit uh, when you are outside uh, away from your own computer. And uh, MT4, uh, MT4, <laughs> uh, MT4 is offering a quite easy. Uh, way to do that, and um, yeah, I would like to share how to do. Personally, I use that as well, because um, even though I have uh, um, lots of trading activities due to the number of accounts um, I trade in, uh, but uh, for me, it's also something to um, yeah, to know what's going on, and I know that at certain times, certain actions should happen, and if then those signals to my mobile uh, do not um, show up, then I know something goes wrong. So for me, it's um, also something to um, yeah to have um, continuously access to what's going on into those trading accounts. So the, the answer is how to do it is quite simple. Um, you install the MetaTrader app on your smartphone. Um, that MetaTrader app is uh, available for Androids uh, and iPhones, so um, you should always find uh, that app in your um, store. And then you, within your smartphone, then you go to um, a sub box called messages, and there you find your meta quotes ID ID, and th that ID looks like the number I showed here. Um, so it's um, just a mixture of between uh, numbers and letters. So um, that is not my personal ID. Uh, <laughs> because otherwise I would get all your trading uh, activities to my smartphone. And the next step is simply that you open uh, your MT4 on your personal computer and there you navigate to tools and then to options and then to notifications and then you simply have to activate um, and enter your MetaQuotes um, ID. So it looks like this here. Um, that if you go to your account, uh, for example, um, if that would be your um, MT4, and then you go to Tools, Options, and then Notifications, and here you can see that you can enable um, the, the notification, and what you have to do is you have to enter your MetaQuotes ID and then, for example, you can just press test and then you get the first uh, test signal to your smartphone. And um, afterwards, whenever a new or something happens into your trade account, let's call it just uh, that general, whatever might happen, a new trade is placed, a new trade uh, or something um, trailing stop, uh, stop loss uh, modification, whatever. So, um, or finally when a trade is closed, then you get exactly uh, one message to your smartphone and then you, there's um, mentions account number, um, the symbol and so on and so on. So you know and when a trade for example is closed then you can see uh, profit and loss for example. So it's quite easy and uh, it's quite helpful um, yeah, in order to, to have um, those signals to your smartphone as well um, and uh, you can supervise your, your own 
trading account. There is one condition, of course, um, and that is uh, that the computer or the, um, you know, the MT4 has to be open uh, and active and uh, having access to the uh, internet because only then you can uh, get those signals, of course. So if you shut down your computer, you will not get uh, anymore any message because uh, this service is, uh, so to say, um, running by your own and not by uh, the broker. Okay, that's all. Um, and uh, that's the way how to uh, get those kind of um, of uh, information to your smartphone. So it's really quite easy and uh, for me it's helpful uh, especially for supervising uh, my accounts. The next topic is uh, that I mentioned that it is a good idea to always from time to time um, have a closer look to your own trading activities. Of course uh, what you can do is you can look um, into your account, um, you, you can get uh, this so-called detailed statement, a summary of, um, of all your trading activities, but when you do something like that, you have always to do the analysis simply by your own and uh, it depends on the kind of question that it's maybe getting quite complicated uh, to get those answers out of um, that spreadsheet um, and normally it's uh, even an, um, nothing you can read with uh, Excel, so but there's an easier access to your own trading account and um, there's a company uh, which is called FX Blue and you see already the internet uh, address here on my slide. Um, that company is offering um, that you can register your account um, on their web page and I will show it in detail um, later on that you know all the steps how to create something like that. Uh, so what you need is of course your account number um, and you need the so-called um, investor password. The investor password um, I don't know whether you know what that means. Um, in MT4 you have always two um, passwords and one is the so-called master password. That is a normal one you uh, use whenever you log in into your account. And there's a second one which is called investor password. Um, and that investor password um, you can log in to your account with that as well, but with, uh, whenever you do it, then you are not allowed uh, to do any trades. So that um, if you, for example, give me your account number, the broker uh, and the investor password, I can look into your account because simply I can start my MT4 and I can uh, log in into your account, but I cannot do any trading. Um, but that is something um, you can share with other people if you want. But you need exactly that password uh, for uh, registering at FX Blue because they use the same, let's call it, uh, model for having access uh, to your account and in order to get all uh, those data. So whenever you register there, please only uh, use your investor password. Um, and if you don't know how to uh, to get it, uh, I will show it once again here um, because you can change it uh, and by changing you um, by changing it means that um, you uh, need your master password and then you can change um, the so-called investor password as well. Uh, when you go here and then click change, then as you will see there's a next um, uh, menu that you enter a new invest investor password if you forgot it or whatever. So that is something you need and if you have it, uh, if you have exactly that password, 
then you can um, do the next uh, steps and um, I will show it exactly how this has to be done just by an example. So here you see I'm now at um, www.fxblue.com and um, then you can press simply here create a free FX Blue live account and what I would like to do here is to register a new account and uh, then you need some information. In this case uh, you need uh, the broker server and in my case it's an um, Argus, Argus, let me see, Argus FX uh, demo account and I need the account number that is exactly the one we have been looking uh, a minute ago and now you see um, I have to enter a read um, only password that is not the MT4 password that is um, a password you need simply for doing the registration um, so whatever you type in here uh, is now your password um, that is only for the later having access to the FX blue so that is not the investor password and then um, what you mm, you can give it a name and uh, in my case I will call it uh, TS C Trader M4, um, M5 and oh no sorry <laughs> I have made a mistake um, here we need um, a password uh, that is for the account here we need the investor password <laughs> sorry um, I misunderstand right now formally there was not read only password so read only is a synonym for uh, this investor password so I have to enter it here um, So, and this one is the password just for having access to the FX Blue account, and we need an email address. Uh, in this case, I use the argosfx.com and agree, and then the registration uh, is done. And um, now you will see, I will get an email uh, for that registration. Here we are. Uh, so I have to confirm my email address. So um, FX Blue validate email. So that is done. And now I can. Um, Oh, send verification code. Um, that is something uh, new. Um, but let's try whether we can use uh, here already everything. Otherwise, I will um, do the, the steps uh, as shown before. And um, you are currently publishing your results using account sync. That is exactly what I would like to do. Uh, now they have the real name here. Um, I could um, use it here or can change it once again. But what I can do now is I can look to um, this account. And this account uh, is an account I created um, two weeks ago. And uh, you see some trading activities. Uh, you see now the equity line. Uh, unfortunately, they know that I'm German, therefore uh, everything is in German here. Um, but uh, I think uh, if you do it from your computer, then uh, you can have it in English as well. And the things you can do here is, of course, um, equity and balance. Uh, for example, uh, that is something you um, you can have in MT4 as well. But you see already some other um, nice charts here. So you have an investigation of what kind of um, symbols have been traded 
and what is the amount or the, the um, percentage value, well uh, in this case, 25% um, of all the trades have been Euro, um, US dollar, for example, that is a nice uh, chart, or what you can see, for example, here is something like um, a chart, uh, the profitability of a trade versus trade duration, so how long did that trade uh, run, um, and that is something you, if you look to your own account, you might, for example, see uh, something that whenever a trade is getting very old, it might be a trade which um, with a tendency to being not profitable, for example. So you can learn something exactly out of um, that analysis if you look profitability versus trade duration. Just as an example, um, which gives you a hint um, what might to be changed within your account. You can have much more charts like this here. Um, if you see here, behind every uh, row is a specific um, a chart you can generate. Just an example, I want to know what trades are most profitable versus symbol of the uh, being traded. And now you have a chart like this and if you go with your mouse uh, over um, the, a specific bar, then you can see, wow, okay, British pound, US dollar has been not profitable uh, up to now and you might see, for example, that Euro, US dollar is the most profitable uh, trading symbol within your account. Of course, something like uh, those statements, they only make sense if you have enough statistics behind um, whatever you do here, but it's important to see it. Um, in my case, I have already um, a bigger statistics, even uh, I have only two weeks history, but you see trades per day is 27, so the trading activity is uh, quite high. So that is um, something I personally, um, for me it's very interesting and if you look for your own trading activities and you can see, uh, for example, like in this case, uh, British pound, US dollar, um, those are the losers, um, then you can try to figure out, wow, I have to look into my uh, trades with British pound, US dollar, maybe something went wrong. That's one idea. Uh, the other is um, that maybe you have um, derived your, your trading strategy uh, by backtesting, you can see, hey, are there mistakes, do I have to change something and so on and so on. Just mentioning um, something to change, you might get an idea of what has to be changed within your trading activities or your trading strategy. Just let's do two additional analysis. One is we can use the week, uh, we can um, build a chart weekday versus profit, so uh, the day of the week and then to see uh, which day is profitable, which day is not that profitable and so on and so on. Um, so in, in this case, uh, the Monday is um, the winner and there's no single weekday which is not profitable. So in this case, I don't would um, yeah, derive any final conclusion that I maybe have to look that on specific days, uh, weekdays, I should not trade or back to trading strategies which are um, derived by a backtesting. Maybe you can look to the overall history of what you have seen 
um, when you develop that strategy and you do the same filtering for all the traits out of your backtest and if you see the same behavior then of course it's a good idea to say well maybe I uh, should apply another filter and that filter for example would be the day of the week or in my case we can even look to another chart which is um, the hour of the day so um, uh, so to say the time um, and now we have uh, eight o'clock nine o'clock and so on and so on and uh, here we would uh, see hmm, um, since we don't have so many hours which are not profitable I would not um, get any conclusion here just a few examples which what you can do with um, th this kind of tool um, for example even uh, things like uh, with long sh uh, long trades or short trades are more profitable in my case um, um, the, the long trades have been uh, making profit and the short trades not but in for this kind of uh, strategy uh, that does not tell me that much. If you have something even more statistics, I just want to show you um, another test account, uh, which of course uh, is not profitable uh, up to now, but here I will show you something where you can really get some uh, some clues out of uh, the history. Now we have an even longer history of more than 200 days and we have even more trades a day, um, nearly 90 trades a day and if I now do the same like a profitability versus time, it's getting a real interesting picture because now we see uh, and that is really now already statistics that there are some certain hours of the day with the highest losses and that gives me already some hints uh, how to change that strategy. I would not change it uh, right away uh, to say okay uh, whenever we have 11 o'clock um, between 11 and maybe 1 o'clock uh, then I, um, the expert advisor should not enter any new trade. Um, no, I, what I would do is first going to my developing of the strategy and looking to the history whether I can find a similar behavior there as well. And if that is the case, then it's a good idea to have um, changes like that. Same applies here for um, the week uh, day of the week uh, consideration. You can see um, the most non-profitable day uh, in this case would be the Tuesday. So um, it's quite interesting to get those kind of analysis and there are hundreds uh, more you can do. You can um, have real statistical analysis of your trading account, uh, returns, profit uh, factors, and so on and so on. So number of charts. Finally, what I would like to show you is um, what's also very good here at FX Blue. You can have um, your trading activities. So um, your your orders, your closed and um, uh, whatever orders, uh, you can have them as um, a text file and that file you can really then import to Excel in order to have a closer view um, by your own. So that is something uh, which is of interest uh, I think as well. So you can directly export all the trades in a so-called uh, CSV format which is a text format and that one can be um, that, that can be opened in Excel and then you can do your own analysis uh, by the way. So there are nice tools, nice things you can do with FX Blue simply by registering uh, your account and then you can do 
all those um, um, analysis uh, quite simple. So I would recommend everybody to do it. Um, by the way, you can protect um, with an additional PIN code uh, your FX Blue account. So um, yeah, um, nobody should have access um, to to those kind of informations uh, because it's uh, your private uh, account. Um, I personally use <laughs> the tool as well in, just to share uh, account information uh, in order to make them public. But that is, I think, um, a, a different topic um, for my position. <laughs> so, <coughs> yeah, so that's a really <clears throat> nice tool. And um, I can only recommend to do it and uh, in order to analyze your own trading account just from time to time. Um, by the way, um, <laughs> what is also quite interesting, um, now you have an additional access to, uh, to your account, not in terms of uh, trading, you cannot enter any trade, but um, just to have a look uh, to your account, you might do it uh, via uh, FX Blue when you are maybe at a computer um, don't, uh, which has no uh, MT4 installed. So that's just an additional um, access channel to your MT4 account. So that is the story all around uh, FX Blue. And now I want to change the topic uh, to so called Martingale uh, strategies. That is a quite basic concept and um, originally it has been, let's call it develop, but uh, that name or that word is not really right. Um, the concept has been developed uh, for a roulette table. And uh, the basic concept is quite easy. Uh, what you do is if you lose, you double your risk. And since there are so many similarities between um, trading and um, uh, other uh, games, um, I do the comparison here with the roulette table first, just to introduce you to the concept of uh, Martingale strategies. And then finally, I use a similar concept to um, um, a strategy, that's not really a strategy, let's call it um, trading activities on the Euro, US dollar on a daily base, um, doing something similar than uh, Martin Gale strategies uh, with a quite nice result, but before I go on, I will, um, I, I want to mention that I would never do something like this. So what I show you here is more for information uh, and absolutely no recommendation to do something like that as well. But you can learn a lot out of those considerations for trading um, activities because the concept is interesting and if you scan the internet about expert advisors, accounts, trade following and so on and so on, you will find and uh, hundreds of those kind of strategies. They would never name it that way, but when you see the equity or balance uh, of those accounts, then you can immediately identify uh, behind this uh, Martingale strategy and um, that is a caution signal for me. It's uh, even um, I would never do something like that, but let's see. So the, the basic rule is quite simple. Um, we go to a roulette table right now and um, for simplicity, I only consider uh, black and red. So I um, do not uh, consider the zero, which is I think is green, but anyhow, um, in order to, to introduce you the concept, it's easier to have only those two states, black and red. And you may put uh, one euro on black. What does happen now? 
um, the roulette table moves and you we get a number and this number is red or black and if black shows up uh, then you get two euros back um, so your risk has been one euro and um, if black shows up then you get two euros that's uh, quite easy if uh, red comes so, so red shows up um, then you lose and you lose exactly what you have put on the table in this case one euro and the rule is now in case of loss you double your risk so in my case here so I go from one euro to for the next round I um, would invest let's say <laughs> is that nice word here um, I would um, invest two euros and if the previous um, trade uh, or previous round uh, was a winner then I will only risk one euro once again so finally that means whenever you win you go back to one euro and in case uh, you lost then you double your risk what does it mean if you follow that kind of strategy let's have a look to uh, an Excel sheet and before I uh, we all look here to the picture I put the picture uh, below just in order to show you how uh, that Excel sheet is uh, created and once again it's really quite easy um, I have an initial uh, risk and that is uh, one euro and uh, I have something here which I call multiplier or multi uh, that means whenever I lose then I double um, my risk I could enter a three as well but uh, I don't care right now and now uh, like those sheets for trading activities trading simulation uh, it's quite similar we have a win rate which is in for roulette table simply 50% um, and I generate a random number and when whenever that number is below my win rate uh, then it's a winner and you see the next one here is above 0.5 uh, then it's a loser and then I can create uh, yeah what is my um, my risk um, the, the first risk is of course always uh, one euro and later we um, what we look is how was the last trade or the last uh, uh, result uh, roulette re uh, result and then depending on that result we either go back to the initial risk in case of win then we go back to one euro or if um, the last one was a loser then we double so we multiply our risk um, with that multiplier and that's all so um, you see for example here first um, I now call everything trade um, it's easier for me uh, the first one was a winner okay fine and my yeah, I have here an initial let's call it account of 100 euro so I go from uh, 100 to 101 second trade is a loser um, so I go back to 100 and then now because the trade before was a loser I increase my risk once again it was a loser so now I have 98 euros once again I double my result in this case to 4 euro and it is now a winner so I have now 102 euro on my account since this one was a winner I go back to my initial uh, a risk value which is one euro and so on and so on then double and double here we have a series uh, of um, doubling uh, we go from one to two to four to eight and yeah now let's have a look to uh, how an account or your wallet uh, at that roulette table would look like if we would follow that strategy and now you see here one example 
and you see um, I do here um, 200 uh, uh, rounds or the trades at the roulette uh, table and finally um, I come up with exactly 200 uh, euros so my my gain my win uh, after playing 200 times at the table would have been 100 euro and you see a nice more or less a straight line uh, which really looks good you see already one um, drawback or draw down in the trading language uh, which is quite huge and in this case we have already been at uh, um, the last trade was a loss of 64 and then no it was uh, uh, 32 and then we double um, and then the next trade was a, a winner so I think I can easily find it uh, here later on um, so here is exactly that uh, series from um, doubling 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 last trade was a loss of 32 euros then we double once again and um, luckily um, we have luck here and then we go up again so it looks quite nice this kind of equity curve in the trading language now you might ask yourself hey um, that looks like a money printing machine and to some extent it is but there's a big big but I would never do uh, a strategy like this let's just do a new um, new uh, configuration and um, that is for me is just pressing F9 uh, at the computer and you see once again a new result and I will show you some more but here you can see already what's not working with that kind of uh, strategy um, you see my um, call it account goes to minus um, in the time being here and to minus 100 so that practically um, if I would have been going to that roulette table with 100 euro in my wallet um, then everything was fine up to here and in latest here I would have to go to an ATM machine uh, and get new money in order to uh, once again double my risk but doing so it turns out to be good um, but nevertheless this would be formally let's call it um, a bankrupt so you're you are already at minus and this happens from time to time now I have pressed F9 once again we have an example once again with that uh, happening uh, and again and again um, you can see those kind of results so what first looks good is bottom line absolutely something good because those events that you go that way to the minus they will come and they will come for sure and there's another practical limitation so this let's call it the strategy works under two preconditions one is now I'm getting more mathematically you would need unlimited resources so to say money in order to double whenever it is needed to double once again and the other is now a practical thing from um, casinos there is normally a, a, a limitation of risk so uh, there's a limit in some cases maybe 1000 euro or I don't know um, so the casino is setting a limit and they know exactly why to set that limit um, one is showing here so what looks good we get finally always a result which is more or less a profit of um, 100 euro during those 200 uh, trades um, but in the time between we have those peaks going south and those peaks going south would ruin every account 
just uh, for for completeness, um, I mentioned that I have not taken into account the zero. Informally, I could do it just uh, going with win weight a little bit uh, down, for example, to uh, point four seven. Um, that is not the reason. Uh, the point four seven is not really the reason that we have now a minus of eight hundred euros. Um, I can press F9 once again, and you, now we have um, a typical behavior. So this a little bit slower or a little bit lower uh, win weight would not really change the picture, um, but the overall conclusion is uh, once again still uh, valid. That means I would never go for a strategy like this by always doubling my risk. And even if I apply an additional rule like uh, I only double up to five times, uh, it would not change the picture um, at all. So it's not that good strategy. So whenever you have uh, ideas of um, doing something within your trade account, um, I would not go for that. I will show you an, another example which is a modification of Martingale strategy and now I do it um, really with uh, stock prices um, or better to say with um, Euro uh, US dollar. Uh, let's first, before we go to the pictures, let's uh, have a look what I do here. Um, you see I have um, data for Euro US dollar um, that is always the same um, um, like uh, open, high, low and close. Uh, I have not written uh, down here, but that is uh, simply um, prices for Euro, US dollar on a daily base. And this chart here, or this uh, Excel sheet, is always doing short trades. So it's not a real trading strategy, it's more for illustration what can be done with something like that and why you should be careful by doing something similar. So how is that done? In this case, I enter always short trades, one short trade after the other. So a day comes to the end, so we have a close price and I open a short trade exactly with that price. And my first trade is always um, a point zero one uh, lot size. That I have a minus here um, is simply indicating um, that this is a short trade. And now my rule is as follows. I wait until the end of the next day. In this day, uh, in this case, the price was against me because uh, we have a price increase in Euro US dollar and since I'm going I have been going short and I go always short I only make short trades as you will see later um, now my rule is the following because um, the price increases I uh, increase my lot size by an additional trade of 0 0.01 lot, so I increase my lot size. Um, so finally now I have 0 0.02 um, lots short Euro US dollar. My entry price of the second position is of course this 1.0308 my previous entry was the other one. Now I have, let's call it a mixed entry of both. So it's in this case it's a simple the average of those two numbers, this number and this number, is now my mixed entry price because I have opened one position for this six, uh, 262 and the other one 308. And that is then my mixed entry level. The rule, or the rule goes further. Once again, the price increases, so it was against me. 
and I would increase my position size once again. So that is how I manage my position size. Whenever um, a day is against me, then I increase. That's uh, the rule, and I increase always by 0 0.01 lots. If something goes with me, like here, in um, this row, from here to, to here, we have um, a price going down, then everything is fine, I would not increase my position size. Now to another thing I have within that Excel sheet, just for illustration. I have a take profit. This take profit is initially 0.9% um, from my entry. So that is um, how I calculate uh, the, the take profit level. But after the uh, second day, so in this row here, um, we know that I have now 0 0.02 lots of Euro US dollar and <coughs> since my target is to earn exactly 9 euros with every trade and with one trade I mean uh, one series even like here from getting from uh, point zero 0.01, point zero 0.02, and so on and so on. I want to earn finally 9 euros. So that is my target and this 9 euros is uh, related to this 0.9% um, and if you do all these uh, lot size calculations uh, then you will see that uh, this is um, going well. So that is the, the principal rule here. Not doubling by losing, it is if um, one day, one move was against me, I increase my position size and if it's with me, I don't increase and finally I set a take profit at a level that this total uh, trade would earn 9 euros. That's all. That's the combination here. And now we can look to the results. And what I've mentioned is true, it's only short trades uh, and nothing else. And you see here, now I keep it that um, uh, big, that is the equity line of this trading strategy. Um, it looks really good. So now you may ask, hey, what's wrong? Um, I want to have this trading uh, strategy. <laughs> and now it comes a but. And the but is, let's look first to the second graph here. This is the lot size, um, let's call it the floating or the current lot size you have within your account. And now you see that from time to time we increase our lot size even up to nearly 0.8 lots just by adding, adding, adding this 0 0.01 lot after 1.01 lot and so on and so on and so on. So what originally seems to be um, trading activity with uh, micro lots is now getting more and more trading activity with real lots. So now you have to ask the question, um, do I have still enough margin for that account? Uh, and you would get here already in problems and that you have already problems. We can show with an additional graph. What you see here is, um, is the real um, equity of that account and this would be shown up in any um, on any website, hey look to my account, uh, this is what I have and it would, looks really nice but if you look to the balance which includes the floating uh, winners, win and loss situation then it would look like this one. 
because whenever we have this big um, lot sizes and we are in the minus and now you see wow um, from time to time um, we have the same kind of peaks like in this introductional uh, introduction of the martingale strategy because it's quite similar um, um, with respect to the to the concept <laughs> therefore the the overall um, balance line looks really similar to what we have had in that Excel sheet about uh, playing roulette. Um, and the logic and the reason is once again simply the same. So what looks nice in terms of equity does not look nice in terms of balance. And the reason is because in the time between we are getting really big, big problems uh, with lot sizes. And that is already a result which is good. Let me change that um, percentage value here, for example, to 1%. Um, and now you see what happens. Now I go for finally 10 euros um, being the final um, win for uh, complete trade series and you see what happens here. This is now more mathematically. We would finally go for 16 lots within that account which is really huge. And what happens with my um, balance you don't want to have that in your personal balance. You see here directly what would happen if you follow a strategy like this. And uh, yeah, a simple uh, ruin uh, or when you have, if you have um, still one million you can put on that account, um, then you can survive and then you get, uh, if I could, would zoom here once again, you would get a positive result as well, like shown in the equity. Um, and then we would have um, finally again a win of nearly 5,000 euros. In between, we would have one margin call after the other and we would have to put fresh money onto that account in order to survive. Finally, it goes through. But it needs a long time. So you see that is what happens always if you have um, strategies with increasing risk per trade uh, in cases of, um, of losers. That is something which is quite typical and everything goes back uh, to this Martingale strategy and whenever you uh, remember it, you will always see lines like this and then you know um, something goes wrong with that kind of trading strategy. I would not even call it a, a trading strategy, it's something simply which you should not do. And by the way, that is something I would mention, I would like to mention uh, in those webinars as well, whenever I find something uh, which is maybe exactly the opposite of what uh, should be done for getting trading strategies. There are always some things uh, which definitely are not recommended and uh, that is exactly what I told you during the last couple of minutes. So as always, um, if you have uh, within next week or whenever you have questions, just uh, send me an email to friedrichowski at argusfx.com and I would like to uh, thank argusfx for having those kind of webinars. You know how to go there and um, I would um, repeat that uh, this FX Blue uh, account managing tool or account analysis tool is quite a nice tool so it's free um, and I can only recommend it uh, and what I not recommend is anything around uh, Martingale strategies.
So that's for now. Um, next week, of course, at the same time, um, same place, and then we go back to the class trading uh, strategies as mentioned in the previous uh, webinar. Whenever you have any question, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.